welcome to a highly, extremely, massively advanced character animation tutorial of a Pac-Man. We need to precisely investigate the original game to exactly know what to create. So the Pac-Man character by itself is a circle. This circle has a sector. That sector is transparent and opens and closes at a fast pace. Then there are the points, which disappear when the Pac-Man touches them. And lastly, the monsters who will eat you and give you lifelong depression, so we're not gonna create these ones at all. So let's jump into Blender now. Now we have got all our nodes, and the first thing that our nodes have is a circle, right? So the first step is done. Now let's go to the top view, we have to fill it. So press F in edit mode and you see it's filled. Now it's time for the second step of our notes and this is the sector. We have to go to the shading workspace, delete this uh, principal shader here and also I'm gonna add an emission shader because this is a 2D animation, very basic in the shading sense. So how do we make a sector here? We can use a gradient texture. So we have this gradient texture and I'm gonna input this into this color here and right now we have something that looks like that. This is not a sector. So let's see what other things we have here we have linear quadratic easing and radial but it doesn't show up because we don't have it mapped correctly press ctrl t now we have this mapping here and if it changes to radial you see we have something that can be a starting point of a sector so for that we can use a compare node uh, the compare node works in a pretty easy way actually it took me a while to understand it i saw everyone use it and then i was like okay i'm gonna use the compare node also and the pac-man game out essentially it was a good node how it works is that as you see this gradient texture here has the value of zero here and then it increases increases and ends up in the value of one and the compare node takes a value like 0.5 this one is here is 0 and this is 1, 0.5 is exactly here on this line. So the compare node takes this value, 0.5, that is here, then uses this epsilon value. Uh, for example, if I set it to 0.1, it makes something like that. It's gonna basically take this 0.5 value as the middle point and then it's gonna go to either sides, like to the increasing side and to the decreasing side by exactly 0.1. So if I make this 0.5, it's gonna cover the whole circle because it's in the middle point here and then it's gonna go like exactly half the circle to both sides and then it's gonna be white all over. So the epsilon basically says like how wide this thing is gonna be. It's a bit like the greater than node. If something is greater than, let's say, if something is greater than 0.5, which is all the sides here, then it's gonna become white, and if something is lower, then it's gonna become black. So if I enable this greater than node, you see this area here is white, the downside is black. And the less than works in an inverted way, so if something is less than 0.5, it's gonna be white, if something is more than 0.5, like this upper area, it's gonna be black. So this is how these nodes work. The compare nodes is like a, the advanced brother of these nodes. Okay, so we have the mouth basically, as you see from the list, the mouth is also moving. So we have to find something that makes this absolute move back and forth during the animation because the mouth has to change constantly throughout the animation and also the frames change constantly throughout the animation it's a pretty safe choice to use the frames as the driving factor of this uh, epsilon here let's use a value and type in here hash frame now when I move this, you see it's always the frame number and we can use this as the epsilon. But right now you see that the epsilon has to move uh, from 0 to let's say 0.5 is like the maximum op openness of the mouth. But the frames are already like 37 and that's, that's a bit too much. So let's divide the frames, right? Let's use a math node because a math node allows us to divide and let's uh, divide by 10. We can plug this here or we can enter here uh, hash frame again and we have saved space by one node. Uh, if we plug this here, right now the frame is 100, it gets divided by 10, so the value of 10 becomes input then input to the epsilon. As you see it opens up, but it doesn't go back because the frames progress basically endlessly. So for that I discovered a pretty cool math operation called ping pong. I'm gonna add a node here and this is ping pong. I'm gonna show you what it does. And you see here I've created a material that uses the ping pong and basically draws a graph for us. So it takes a value from zero and then goes up and down and up and down. And that's pretty useful because it can uh, animate the movement of our mouth. So uh, type in here like, uh, let's say 0.5. This is not essentially a good thing. So I'm gonna decrease this, basically how open the mouth gets. I think 0.2 is a good value here and it's like horrendously fast. So let's type in like, 30 here. Okay, that's like that's like a Pac-Man already, you know. Now we have to make this uh, black part yellow and the white part transparent. So let's make this yellow and let's add a transparent shader. Uh, plug this one here. Pretty much done, but the transparent areas are black. And that's because in the material settings, make sure we have this object selected, change it to alpha blend 
second. So that's how it looks like now. So when I hide these overlays here and play it, it looks like Pac-Man, right? So now that the Pac-Man is in place, let's make it move circularly. And for that, we are going to use, of course, geometry nodes because we are very procedural guys in curves here. I actually have like in my channel analytics, I have 0.5% of curves while so looking at my channel. So yeah, I can see that 3 yard is not very popular amongst curves. So um, let's add a new set of geometry nodes here. First, if we want to move something in geometry nodes, we have to add a transform node. So as you see here, when I move this Y thing, it moves, but oh no, the mouth doesn't move with it. And that's because we're using object coordinates and object coordinates are dependent on the center point of the mesh. So we have to change our texture coordinates. So let's go back to the shader editor here and let's use the um, UV coordinates because the UV coordinates are dependent on the face and not the objects like middle point or something like that. We also have to unwrap them. So press U and Smart UV Project, open a UV editor window, select this one and move this around. That's okay, it doesn't have to be so exact. I mean, no one's gonna notice the same ways. So now we have arrived to the math part here. How do we make this move as a circle? I only need to change the X coordinates and the Y coordinates, right? Here I can only change all the coordinates at once and that is not what I want. So I'm gonna go here and add a combine XYZ node. So now I can move all of these coordinates like before, but input different things to them. And to understand how it's gonna move like a circle, I have to open a graphing calculator for you guys. A GeoGebra. I made a circle and I made this point here which is uh, which is which is which is the pac-man so i'm gonna make this bigger and also yellow so every point on a circle is a point of a right triangle as you see here when i move this point around there is always a right triangle that can be formed and it tells me to move from the center point to the right by 0.71 and to the sky basically or up by 0.39 so Blender has to calculate this thing somehow. And we have to tell it to calculate the length of these legs automatically and move the Pac-Man after that by these numbers. So that's why we have separated this combine XYZ so we can input different values to the X and to the Y because you see they are always different, right? So now when the Pac-Man moves, let's think what parameter we can use to calculate the length. We can use the angle, right? Because here we have the angle that always is gonna get bigger as the Pac-Man progresses or moves. Right now it's like seven and then it gets bigger. It's like 67 right now. So let's go back to Blender and find a way to input this angle into Blender. As we use uh, the frames for the mouth movement, because they are just numbers basically, we can use this as the angle, right? I'm gonna input a math node here, hash frame, and just for the case when I maybe have to make this slower, I'm gonna input one here right now, but I can always increase this and then this number gets smaller and things are gonna become more slow. So now this is our angle and we can use this as the thing that moves the Pac-Man around. Now we only have to calculate the lengths of these legs from this angle. So trigonometry tells us that the opposite leg of the angle, at this angle, the opposite leg is here. And if we divide this by the hypotenuse, this will give us the size value of the angle. So for the sake of simplicity, let's make the hypotenuse, which is this one here, let's make this equal to 1. It doesn't really matter. So when we move this formula around, we get that the sine of the angle, the angle here, gives us the length of the opposite leg. And for the leg that's closer, or this uh, green leg here, this will be the cosine of the angle. So now that we know that, we can take this angle, which is the frame number, and make a cosine of it, which is the x moment, because the cosine gives us the leg that's closer, and the sine gives us the leg that's further away. So let's make a cosine of it. Let's use math node, and we have a cosine here under the trigonometric tab. Input this angle here, and let's use the cosine as the x because you see this is the x coordinate this is the y coordinate now let's duplicate this one and let's use the sine here and plug this angle here and the other angle the y and now let's see what happens okay it moves as a circle right but it's a bit too fast so increase this division here and now it's gonna move like a pac-man in my animation so the moment is solved but there is one thing left and this is the rotation as you see it's gonna move like always facing to one direction this is not what we want so only change the z rotation we have to use this combine xyz again so i'm gonna plug this here and now we can input three different things into this vector and control them separately as you see here we got our angle something tells me that we can use this angle as the z rotation it seems to be working, right? But it's a bit offset, so uh, basically we have to just add something to this angle to shift it to the right place. So I'm gonna add a addition here and just eyeballing the rotation. That's okay, I think. It's moving like in a very, very small circle here, so we can make this bigger if you multiply this vector here. So I'm gonna add some vector math. A vector math, because it's a vector, we can't use a normal math node here. But if I multiply this by a number or so, 
and it's gonna become bigger basically. So this is how the movement works like that. If you don't feel at home with all of these uh, triangles and math and vectors, don't be afraid to watch a few math tutorials out there and have a better understanding of how this system works. This is pretty much ready, but we have to make it loopable. So let's search the frame where it does the full rotation. It's somewhere here, 107. Uh, I'm gonna make this frame range 107. Press shift uh, right arrow to go to the first frame and shift left arrow to go to the last frame. Pretty similar, so let's play this and see if it's loopable. It actually is. So now this thing is solved and if it isn't loopable for you, that mostly because of the mouth movement, then you have to go to the shader editor and here you have this frame. And for example, if you need this mouth to be in a different position in the uh, first frame or on the last frame, then you can just uh, increase or decrease the speed, basically. So okay, so the Pac-Man is in place, now we have to add the dots. And for that, we're gonna use geometry nodes again. So let's add a circle, select the amount of vertices, which are eventually gonna be our dots or points. Let's make 17 points. Let's make this bigger also, so that we have the Pac-Man actually eating these dots. So the Pac-Man is moving around this line and the dots are gonna appear on this line. And now let's add points on each vertex of this uh, circle. So for that, we have a point instance because we wanna instance points, right? So we have to have a point object here and we don't have one. So let's create one, fill this and move this to the right. I'm gonna select this uh, geometry node circle again and let's select this circle 002. These are a bit too big. So let's add a attribute fill uh, before and we're gonna add this because we're gonna wanna fill the scale attribute with a certain value. If I type in here scale, it's zero right now, you see. And if I make this bigger, we can change the scale of these points. So something like that looks pretty acceptable to me. Now we have points, but we somehow have to make sure that the points disappear when the Pac-Man has eaten them, right? And to make them disappear, we are gonna use some cheating. So we're gonna hide them basically. So let's add another circle here. Let's make this bigger. And we have to make like a object that covers the points basically. So go to edit mode, press E and scale. And now we have something that covers the objects. So I'm gonna call this object cloak of invisibility. Ability. And also let's add a new collection, cloaks. <laughs> move this cloak into the cloaks collection. Why we did that was that I'm gonna change the property of this object to be a holdout object, which means it's gonna hide everything that's behind it. So I'm gonna enable in the filter section, this thing here, which is holdout. And now when I enable this for this collection and we have to check transparent and go to the render mode here, then move this object up on the Z axis a bit and now you see they're visible from the down, but not from the upside. Now all the dots are hidden and that's not very useful. Let's make this circle uh, more like, a, I don't know the name for this thing in English. It's, it's like on the Soviet, um, I mean this one here, right? <laughs> so you can understand what I mean. Press V. So this is gonna split these edges and press L and keep this one, or actually I'm gonna delete this one here. So I'm gonna press X, delete vertices. And now we have to make this cloak of invisibility move with the um, Pac-Man. So how is the Pac-Man moved? It's moved with the angle here and the speed is the frames divided by 17. So let's do the same thing with this um, cloak here. So let's add a transform node and let's add a combine XYZ again because right now we cannot input three different values. So now we can input something here and let's add a math node to use our beloved frames, a hash frame and we have to add it to the rotation. And it was frames divided by 17. So if I input 17 here, it's exactly on the same tempo. So we just have to shift this a little bit. So I'm gonna add a math node, just like with the Pac-Man angle, we can add something to this angle. I'm gonna shift this to here, the dots disappear, right? But the problem here is that you can see how something is covering the objects. So somehow we have to make sure that during the full rotation, it actually isn't moving like by one degree, but it's dividing the 360 degrees into, well, how many dots we have? We have 17 dots. So it has to divide this whole rotation into 17 different areas and only use like these areas as the points where it can be. And we can do this by truncating. And truncation is the integer part of A removing fractional digits. So this means when you have like 7.653, it's only gonna keep the seven. If you have 14.1, it's only gonna keep the 14. I also have a visual explanation for that. So here you see, I have a range going from zero to one. So this means all the values here are zero point something, something, something up to one. And this one here is like infinitely thin basically. So if I use this truncation right now, everything is black because 
because everything here is zero point something. Uh, let's say now I want to make this into two parts and I can make this by making sure that this range is doubled. So instead of going from 0 to 1, let's go from 0 to 2. Here it's 0 and here it's 2 now. So if I use this truncation, it's here the first part, which is 0 point something up to 1, is gonna be 0 and 1 point something up to 2 is gonna be 1 because the fractional digits are removed. And if I put in here like 5, then you can see it has done something, but because we haven't divided it by 5, we cannot see this anymore. So when I divide this by 5 again, it's divided into 5 parts. This thing here is visual, but we have to do the same thing with our rotation. So we have to make sure that our rotation is divided into 17 different parts. We have to multiply and divide by 17. But it's not so easy, because originally the range goes from 0 to 1. But in our case, it doesn't go from 0 to 1, it goes from 0 to 360 and it actually even doesn't do that because Blender doesn't use degrees, it uses radians. And one full rotation in radians is 6.283, which is 2 pi exactly. So we somehow have to make sure that we get from the range of 6.283, which is the full rotation here uh, on the z-axis, and we get to 17. So the range has to go from 0 here, instead of going to 6, it has to go to 17. So by how much have to make 6.2 larger to get 17? Let's calculate. 17 divided by 6.283, 2.7. So we can use this as the multiplication. Right now it's like very jacked and not exact at all. And let's use a multiply before four and let's multiply it by 17 and we divide this by the full rotation which is 6.283. As I said before we have to divide this, move another node here and divide this by the same number. And it's working but it's a bit shifted. If you want to shift this there is no point in doing this before and that's because truncation is going to remove all these tiny details that we get with this addition node. So let's move this addition node after the truncation. So I'm going to move this here and now let's see how it works. So now it works perfectly, just as we have imagined. We are the gods of math, and the last thing left is to make this pixelated as pixel art generally is. Uh, let's save the project, and I'm gonna render a frame. So that's the frame, and now let's go to the compositing, and let's make this pixelated. Use notes, press Ctrl, Shift, Click, pressing the V key makes it smaller. To have this pixelation effect, we first have to make this image smaller. Let's use a node called transform, just like in geometry nodes. Let's make the scale 0.2. And now let's increase the scale by something like five. And the five here isn't random. It's basically the inversion of this number here. This number here is one divided by five. Five is five divided by one. So these are like inversions. Uh, but as you see, it's not like really pixelated. And that's because Blender uses this as the basis of its effects. So it always refers back to this one. And that's because we don't get any quality loss, which pixelation is. So for that, we have a node called pixelate. It's very tedious to just input these values manually. So let's use a value. Let's input one here and one here. And let's input 10 here. And as you remember from before, the scale value here has to be one divided by the a thing here, which comes from here. So we can divide one by this value and it should work. Let's use a math node, set it to division. And let's divide one by this value here. And let's input this into the scale. And as you see, it's working like it has to. So that's how the world's most mathematical Pac-Man is made. I hope I explained thoroughly and if something remained unclear I can help you out in the comment section.